um, honestly, I took my time recording all this, but it's worth it, to be honest. Hey, hi, hello, it's Zen's Mean Palace, and this is the first episode of Zen Talks on YouTube. As I previously did this in a server, I was in just doing voice notes in a specific channel. That's actually where I'm beginning. For the last few months, a lot has happened and I'd love to get it off my chest in a long video. Well, I'm not sure if it's going to be long based on the script I wrote, but therefore, I'll call this video the rebirth of the Mean Palace. My channel was made in 2016 where I'd post cartoon clips I'd record in my living room. But I only started uploading actual content that actually are my childhood special interests. That's what I did for years, up until 2019 when I discovered Stan Twitter. Despite the name, a lot of clips from that side of Twitter were uploaded on YouTube which was exactly the humor I needed at the time as a queer teen, soon to be teen, because I was like um, 12 or something, 13. And that's really the time where you begin developing yourself. So I was grateful for that. Eventually, I'd post stand Twitter content myself on my channel alongside my Nietzsche's. But I'd, I'd post more Stan Twitter because that's what where the people wanted to see. So, but I still post my niche, niches. Most of my success on my channel came from combining the two or providing the memes that were popular at the time. I make my own edits sometimes and on this fateful day in the summer, I uploaded a video that would change everything. If, but before I get there, now, this video isn't sponsored, I'm just gonna go back before talking about that video. Because I was getting into Stan Twitter YouTube and actual Stan Twitter on Twitter. Oh, lots of tweet. I met up with a channel that went by the name Iconic Barb. Barbs are Nicki Minaj fans, just so you know. His channel grew very fast actually, and I saw it in real time. I remember he was just like 10 subscribers and then the next week he had like a hundred and then he got even more like he went really fast and faster than I am maybe it's because he posted stand Twitter content instead of mainly his niches but yeah I met up with him and he eventually made a Barb discord server because he was so popular and he could, could get this as an opportunity for fellow barbs or stan twitter people to you know connect with each other i was familiar with discord like i i've used it a lot to join people on youtube there so i was very familiar and i sort of knew what to do there but like this was a server where everything was different i mean this is the beginning of a long history, like it's about two years long. <sighs> I was met up with fun moments, but always also toxic moments. Honestly, it was a learning experience. I, I was a minor, yes, I was a minor at the time, and there was a lot of people that were either minors or adults, or be, they were becoming adults, and uh, there was also a channel where they'd post NSFW. Like, I was familiar with NSFW, but like, what they would post there was so grotesque, so weird. I found it funny, but it was not the stuff I was supposed to be watching at the time. And I would post it on my YouTube too, and uh, I got a history of I this is where I got a history of posting things that I should not be on YouTube and I kind of regret it but like th that's where I got my success from it, yeah it was a learning experience and I wanted to make my own server inspired by it so that's how a bit 
how that's how basically everything came to be from my channel and I would post I would start posting an FW crop ish like that like memes but not that bad like it's just it, it's kind of awkward talking about it I, I shouldn't have posted stuff like that but you know it it just happens I I promoted my own server in the barb server and a lot of people from there came and there are still people that were in that server that would stay stick beside me and I I'm grateful for that and it was nice to have my first attempt at an actual server to be with this many people I was grateful for the success I had yeah I was already at many subscribers during this time like a thousand but I only get really popular during the summer where I post the infamous video signal nightcore static it was a video of <laughs> like it was a video of it was Bara NSFW and it was like an office guy squatting in quotations sped up to a twice song signal nightcore and it was with CapCut edits <laughs> and that's that's why it's called Signal Night Aesthetic but you wouldn't have a clue about the bara and I think that was a surprise that people got and it being associated with twice like <laughs> if you were there you should you deserve a medal I don't care I don't care if you hate me you deserve a medal because you were there like I literally went from a thousand subscribers to five thousand overnight. I don't remember, but it was a lot more than what I previously had. That was insane. I had multiple other videos just barely reaching the success of Signal Nightcore aesthetic during that time. A lot of those videos blew up because I knew that a lot of people were tuning in and I would use that success to grow my channel. But I didn't know what to do with my newfound fame. I mean, I was only 15 when this happened. I only just turned 15. So I was 14 before. And after that video, I had so many people join my server that it was insane. But those people were mainly interested in content like Signal Night or Aesthetic. And I believe that's where a lot of the issues that came from making the server a thing came from but I I don't feel like talking about that now everything went kind of downhill when I got strike for posting that video signal like or aesthetic it shouldn't be a surprise since it's Bara NSFW I lost almost lost my channel but I digress it wasn't a big issue to me this happened multiple times and I evaded it every time my, I even protected my channel by hiding it until the strike was over. Like, that was my strategy to keep my channel alive, even though I would probably lose engagement over my channel. It was necessary to keep it, but I didn't want to do it this one time in September. And until September 2023, 20, that's, that's where the problem began. That, that's where it all began it wasn't sensitive of me but like I just wanted to be funny like in a shocking way because I've always been shocking I've shocked content that was always my main thing not NSF I didn't like posting NSFW content that much only a few times but that was just to shock people I was not going to be a porn distribution center like your boy song because that's what he ended up being I'm not a Mary Alice even though Mary Alice's videos were funny I didn't want to be like that I wanted to be like a troll but not exactly I wanted to be shockingly funny but that was the problem I made lots of 9-11 related videos Funnily enough, the strike I got for it wasn't the finishing blow because I posted a fan cam of the 9-11 attacks with Katy Perry music playing. 
and it was visible so that's why it got taken down but the finishing blow while I had the strike was a video of Bjerk Bjerk that's how you pronounce her name beating up a reporter I mean the video of Bjerk beating up a reporter is still up on YouTube so why am I the issue like what? <sighs> it Bjork in Bangkok. That was got that got me banned. And I'm still banned. And I my channel is literally gone right now, so like I'm not getting it back. <sighs> I've already reached many milestones with my old channel. I reached a million views for the first time when I posted a totally spice clip of like, oh my gosh, she's bald! She's boss and she's torturing people who have hair. I had over 12,000 subscribers. It was nice actually. I learned a lot, but there was so much toxicity as I had success because my target audience is niche. And when it goes outside, people find it weird. People fi- people are going to be bigoted. I-, I post content for I post content for the gays the bi's, the lesbians, the trans people, and not um, the non-binary group. I post people that are like me, queer, uh, neurodivergent, I, black, any sort of... I posted, for, I posted for a group of people that could identify with me in a way. Not bigotry, bigots. I, I couldn't control that. I didn't know what to do with that. But it was so disheartening seeing lots of comments being disrespectful. I started to dread having this channel, even though it was valuable to me. I loved comments, reading comments or funny captions or something, because we understood each other. I could speak up on issues because I had a platform to talk to people. I, I I still am doing that, even though I don't have that big of a platform anymore but you know it's all fine now i can't do anything about it it's just my mistakes led up to this and i went too far i just miss a lot of people i used to talk to on youtube and we have yet to reconnect i'm so glad you are all here with me again if you're here because i have your comments i didn't say this publicly i didn't even heart most of your comments because i feel like you really have to make me laugh laugh to get a heart comment but i liked i loved all your comments they make my day for real i laugh out loud to them sometimes and i think about them i even have screenshots and the screenshots they're the most valuable valuable to me right now because that's all i have right now of my old channel and some videos too i feel sad thinking about what happened I was going through a lot emotionally during those two whole years. It went up and down. It was like a dip. Then it went up. I kind of still am feeling up and down sometimes. But posting videos was the most fun thing to me. It was always about posting the videos of what I liked to do. What I like seeing. Sharing it with people. I don't even care if only 40 people watch my videos. That means 40 people have watched it or like 40 times, like multiple times. Like people were interested in this and th- thinking about that just makes me feel good. I I wasn't intending on having success. I was never really about that. I celebrated it, but you know, I'm not I didn't even do this. I just did it for I just did it for fun. I post the everything I ever posted was made on my phone, my little phone. I used my fingers to do everything. But I way better on my phone with anything that I cannot even do it on a laptop. I only do a laptop when I need to change my channel look, but even now that does that isn't even necessary. I did everything with for fun with my fingers. I just wanted to have fun posting. I really didn't care and I was too careless. 
I'm 17 now and reflecting on this feels hard. I took way too much time just to reflect on the past for a video. But it's really half a topic for me. And I don't think I could be mentioning a lot of things that happened to me because it's just too much for me to remember. Like I have to dig deep in my memory to even talk about it because this is like two whole years of information that I'm simplifying, extremely simplified here. And I'm not even talking the most about discord, drama, a lot of that happened and this is going to be mainly about my YouTube channel that I lost. And I wanted to post it here on my new channel, despite it being less people tuning in, probably. But this is for the people that have stuck with me and want to know about my story. Therefore, I called it the Rebirth of the Meme Palace. Thanks for watching this Zen Talks episode. I'm so glad you stuck with me, genuinely. And, you know, I'll see you for the next time.